I believe the word is uh, is going to come forth. It's going to be hopefully uh, have some merit. I believe it is. I believe. I believe. You know, we're all about choices. Things that God's doing in our lives. I mean, it's, every day is a choice, right? I mean, you had a choice to come here this morning, whether you're going to get up and come or not. You chose to. I believe you're blessed for doing that. I believe God tells us, commands us to do that, and wants us to do. His word and His word is truth. You know, not to forsake the assembly of the saints of some have. He wants us to come together so we can have uh, this atmosphere that we're, we're we're in of of faith, building on faith, and people having, you know, maybe their faith might be a little down, or maybe they've been, but then all of a sudden they're back, they're getting up because some of their brother right next to them, sister right next to them is is praying with him, and just the uplifting because that's really what God wants. He wants us. Yeah, let's let's. Do what God says to do, and we'll get the results. That's just all there is to it. It's a choice. It's as simple as that. You say you're sorry and ask God to forgive you. You're, he says he'll forgive you. It's just that simple, right? That's if you mean it. You got to mean it. So the scripture today, that we're going to start. I got uh, several scriptures, but one of them I want to start off. It says in Acts uh, 2.42 and 47. It's, it's kind of jump error. It says, and they continued steadfastly. And that's part of it. And then we're going to jump down. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So here, let's read it real quick. I'm going to say it again. And they continued steadfastly. That's that's an ongoing, stead, staying steady, doing it all the time. Been doing this. I've been coming to church for I don't know how long. Well, keep coming because he says, and they continued steadfastly, and the Lord added to the church. What did he do? He added to the church daily such as should be saved. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about a story real quick um, that was told by T.C. Hamlet. It was concerning, uh, of all things, two frogs. And so let's see if you can get this one. So two frogs, they fell into a can of cream. Okay? And, or so I've heard it told, the sides of the can were shiny and steep, and the cream was deep and cold. Oh, what's the use? Croak number one. Tis fate. No helps around. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, sad world. And weeping still he drowned. But number two of sterner stuff, dog paddled in surprise. The while he whipped he wiped his creamy face and dried his creamy eyes. I'll swim a while at least, he said, or so I've heard, he said. It really won't help the world if one more frog were dead. An hour or two, he kicked and swam. Not once he stopped to mutter, but kicked and kicked and swam and kicked, then hopped out via butter. <laughs> it's not margarine, baby. It's, it tastes like butter. <laughs> you get in some cream, man. You start turning it up. That's what it is. You don't even know what you're doing. You don't even know what's happening. You don't know the. the, the I'm sure he didn't know this thing was going to turn to butter, right? And it turned hard, and all of a sudden he'd be able to jump out. He just wasn't quitting, right? Okay, so if if you uh, you know in in a way you and I have some of the same choices. That these guys, that's why I'm saying we're talking about some choices here. You can either give up or continue in steadfast perseverance. I don't know about you, but steadfast means steady and perseverance. You're persevering, you're staying steady until God moves on our situation. See, because all of us have situations, all of us are going through stuff. You know, you have stuff and you can say, Oh, I don't know. I'm, and you almost feel like you're the only one doing it, but I promise you, there, there's nothing under the sun that hadn't already been done, according to the word. There's no temptation taking you such that it is not common to man, but with every temptation, God will make a way of escape. Yeah. So he'll give you an out yeah. to whether you choose to take it or not. Yeah, I'm sure that each of us really want to see church growth in our in our body here, don't you? Yeah. Yes? No? Yes. Okay, I got some, I got some yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. And so, you know, and sometimes I can remember when, when when all the storms and all the stuff was going on and how it felt just kind of, we felt like just kind of hopeless and inadequate a little bit, you know, just like, what's the use? Or, you know, it, it's, we got beat, slammed up two or three times in a row. And, 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 and just the, the, the gravity of it all and, 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 and the anxiety that was trying to say, I mean, it was, they, they've got, it's like post-traumatic stress syndrome that people go into war and come in. It was like a battle zone around here for a while, but because we know, this and this, we know that church growth cannot be produced by man, though. Yeah, 
See, anything that's going to be produced that's worth, that has any kind of eternal value, this is what we're talking about, eternity, eternal value, will be accomplished by God, right? Through us. You know it's only God who can breathe. This is a fact, and you know this for a fact. It's only God who can really breathe on a, on, on a valley of bones to come back to life. They're dead to come in. It's only God who can cause the revival, uh, church growth, and the hearts, and our hearts to be receptive to Him. That's it. God wants His church to grow. I believe. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's obvious. Let's see. He wants it to grow, and I'm just going to I'm going to stir this up. I want to kind of continue to, to 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 put this in our vision, and as as this body goes, we're not we're not stopping. It's been said that children are God's way of saying. You know, you got a bunch of children having grandkids kids over and everything. And, you know, my heart, we had a good time. You know, one was doing one thing, another was doing it. But we were out there shooting some BB guns and stuff, and I'm shaking how to shoot and stuff. And so we're having a good time. And, but, you know, that having children and having those grandchildren, it's almost like God's way of saying, hey, look, it's okay. The world, it should go on. Yes. I mean, why even have them? What should go on? Yes. See, the, I believe the church, the called out ones, we're the called out ones, right? Okay? And that, 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 that ones that's still on earth right now, we're still here, right? I think that's God's way of saying the church will go on. Just like he said, just with, with children. We're still here. There's a reason. He wants the church to go on. In Matthew 24, we see the signs that uh, precede the second coming of, of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read that. It's 1 through 14, chapter 24, 1 through 14. Pretty good little bit, but it's good. I'm read that out of the And this is the signs of Christ returning. Okay? And in, starting with verse 1, it says, Jesus left the temple area and was going on his, on his way when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the magnificent, massive buildings of temples. Now, I've seen some buildings that were just all, oh, you know, just you know, I'm like, man, look at the detail. Look at the structure of this thing. Just amazing. And he said to them, do you see all these things? Do you see these things? I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, not one stone here will be left on another, which will not be torn down. While Jesus was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, what, you know, when, when will this destruction of the temple take place and, and what will be the sign of your coming and, uh, and of the end of the completion and consumption of the age? And Jesus answered and said, be careful that no one misleads you. Okay, listen, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in my name misusing it and, and, um, and uh, appropriating it, the strength of the name which belongs to me. In other words, he's going to use his name because it has strength and it's got power in to try to say this is who I am, saying I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, and they will mislead many. You will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that you are not frightened. Yes, that's right. that's right. For those things must take place but that is not yet the end of the age. Amen. Amen. For nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. Mm -hmm. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, but all these things are merely the beginning of the birth pains of the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented troubles. Then they will hand you over to, the, to endure tribulation and will put you to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. You're going to be martyred just because you, you have Christian Christ in you. At that time, many will be off, offended. Many who? Everybody, including Christians. Many will be offended and, re, and repelled by their association with me, Jesus, and will fall away from the one whom they should trust. They're falling away from the one that's only going to give them the, 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 the thing know. they need, the trust that they need, and will betray one another, handing over believers to their pro, their persecutors, yeah. and will hate one another. Yeah. We love each other right now. Many false prophets will appear and mislead many because the lawlessness is increased. The love of most people will grow cold. 
But the one who endures and bears up under suffering keeps swimming, baby. <laughs> Keep dog pounding. Okay, the one who endures. I want you to get that. It's not easy. Enduring doesn't mean, you know, you know, just lay back and kick back and feeling good is not enduring. Enduring means it's rough. It's tough. Endure and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. You say, well, I got saved back then. And then you want to back up a little bit, start backing up a little bit, and you think you're going to be okay. It says that you endure. It says the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This one saved, always saved, doesn't sound right here, does it? This good news of the kingdom of the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end of the age will come. See, in verse 12, it reads, the love of most people will grow cold. We can't quit now. We can't quit now. We can't retreat. We must march forward because, as, as I've said before, we're not, we're not waiting. We're not waiting on everything to be perfect. We're not waiting to have a bunch of money. We're not doing that. We're going to press forward, and we're going to keep moving. It's time for us to move forward. Amen? Okay, we will need to establish it in our hearts and our minds that we will not stop loving him. That's how you're going to move forward. You got, you, got to, you got to get it in your heart, get it in your mind. We're not stop loving God. We're not stop loving Jesus. We're going to stay with it. We'll not stop serving him, right? We're, we're not going to stop worshiping him or trusting him. We'll not stop witnessing for him, That's good. That's good. praying to him or living for him now. Now, today is a day of salvation. Wake up every day. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Got another shot. Thank you, Jesus. I love the life you've given me. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're with me always. Thank you, Jesus. It's a thank you, Jesus moment, man. We can do this for a long time. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you something. Would, would the, it, 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 this is why it's got to be an ongoing, an ongoing. This is why well, you can't go halfway through or get started part way and then all of a sudden say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to lay back quick. That's not good. It'd be hard. Here's what, the, here's what, here's what I'm going to ask you. Would the walls of the Jericho have come down if Israel had stopped walking after six days? It took seven, right? Would they have came down if we just said, okay, six is enough? No, six wasn't enough. What about, would, would Naaman have been healed of leprosy if he had stopped dipping in the Jordan River after six times? Something about seven, right? Would the New Testament church have grown continually if the, apostle, if the apostles and the believers had stopped sowing the word, the seed, again and again? Would it? No. Some people, some people predict that in the last day there'll be a great falling away and a great falling away we'll, we'll see through the falling away of the early church. That's what happened. It fell away through the early church. And we have passed kind of through that reformation and presently in the latter rain right now for of revival. That's what I believe. And the revival is pouring out here. It's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit as Joel prophesied in Joel 2, 28 and 29. I'm going to read it real quick. It says, And afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions even upon the manservants and upon the maidservants in those days will I pour out my spirit see God wants you to have this he wants me to have it he wants you to have it Matthew 24 13 and 14 it says this but he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So I want you to note this part, this word endure. See, the race is not over, right? Nor the battle to be so strong. Here, this is in Ecclesiastes. The race is not to the swift, you know, so the battle or nor to the battle to the strong. But the race is won by one who runs with patience or endurance. 
That's in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith, it's all about faith, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's uh, absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active, persistent, the race that and persist persistence the race that is set before us looking away from all that will distract us and focusing on our eyes on Jesus the first incentive for our belief this is still the scripture first incentive of our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity he's the one that brings our faith to maturity who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him he endured the cross, disregarding the shame, naked on a cross, busted up for the world to see. He endured. You see that word? Mm -hmm. Enduring the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. There's an outcome when you endure. Yeah. There's, a, there's a winning. There's something that happens there. There's success at the end of that enduring. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There is. Yeah. Have you ever kind of wondered what you're doing on earth that you cannot do in heaven? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. I'm going to give you a couple. First of all, we know, okay, praying, singing, worshiping, fellowshipping, listening to the voice of God. You can hear that. You can do that on earth and in heaven, right? Okay. Yeah. But here's one thing that can't be done in heaven, right? Sin and witnessing. Right. That's, That's good. good. That's good. You might want to take a minute and ask yourself, which one are you continuing to do right now? Sinning or witnessing? Because the rest of the stuff, we can say, oh, we can pray and sing and worship and fellowship and listening to the voice of God. And you can do that both in heaven and, and earth. But what can't you do in heaven? Sin. Sin. Witness. It's done. It's over with. God wants his church to grow because he is the God of a full house. And it's hard to beat a full house. But anyway, it's he is the God of a full house. He wants this house to be full. Some might say God is concerned with quality of our membership rather than quantity. I say this. This is what I say. And I say God says, I believe that God is interested not only in that, he's interested in both. Put them together. He's interested in the glorious church without spot or wrinkle. That's what he said. He does want quality. And a great host of men and women who will serve him. That's quantity. Amen? See, after all, before he left for heaven, he proclaimed this. In my Father's house are many what? I'm going to read it out of, out of another way here. It says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I, wouldn't, I would have told you because I am going there to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. He's got a place for you and me. But we got to endure to the end. Yes, amen. He also, came, he also came because of his love for the world. I don't even know how he does it. I mean, if by all rights, I'm going to think about it. If I, you know, you think about how you were before you got saved. I mean, by all rights, he should have just killed us. <laughs> and I, sometimes I see people, I think, well, they got saved. I say, okay, somebody, we need to kill him now before he gets all messed up. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get it over with. Amen. <laughs> God, give me Jesus. Go on, baby. I don't think that's going to work with me, though. I don't know. I would have had a, my, I just messed up my ride, you know. <laughs> well, I thought I was doing good. See, because in John 3, 16, you've, everybody knows that one, right? So, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? 
everlasting life. In Luke 14, Jesus is telling this story. It's, it's a convincing story uh, of the, you know, the, the desire, uh, his desire of the church to be full. He wants his church to be full and, and experience church growth. And here's, uh, you know, uh, a man had prepared a great feast. Here's the story. He said a man had, he had uh, prepared this great feast. This is the story Jesus was telling. And he invited many, right? And the servant, he went, uh, he sent with a message. And he said, now, go out there and tell him, come, all things are ready now. That's in verse 17. Everything's ready now. Come, come, come. And those that were invited, they gave all this foolish excuses. You know, I got an ox that's in, you know, five oxes I bought. You know, I just got married. I mean, I, you know, everybody had an excuse and refused to come. And when the servant informed the master, he sent him out quickly to bring the poor and the disabled and the blind and the lame. That's what's going to happen here. I don't know. <laughs> the servant brought those. So they didn't say they didn't come. They came. Didn't say all they had any excuses. None of them had any excuses. They all came. Why? Jesus in the house. The servant brought those, but there was still room for more. And so the master, he sent the servant out again. He said, all right, I'm going to tell you this. Go on out. One more, go out. One more time. This ain't good. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of upset about it. Go out. And he said, why, why, why he told, he told him to go out because he was upset. Now, let me ask you this question. And the master, you know, told him and he went. But let me ask you, why was the master insistent on sending the servant again? Huh? Every one of you are. Right, almost. No, never. <laughs> no, you are right. You are. Because in verse twenty-three it says, "Compel them to come in, that my house may be filled." Jesus has prepared a great feast. You know, I mean, it is. He's got this big feast that we got. Jesus said, "Come on, I've done prepared your mansion. Everything's ready to go. You've got all this place to dwell. I want you to come. All the, everything's ready." And he's compelling all to come in so his house, the church, will be full. Jesus declared upon this rock, I will build my church in Matthew. He's building this church upon what rock? It wasn't Peter the rock. He wasn't calling Peter the rock. He was calling the thing that Peter knew and, and comprehended and was only able to get that through the Spirit of God, that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the living Word that came down and dwelt among us. And in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul, he says this, he reveals that the uh, this partnership role that we have with God when it comes to the church growth. He says, I have planted, listen, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the what? Increase. The increase. See, it's not going to come just because of you and me. It's going to come. We have to do some things, but it's God who's going to give the increase. No man could come to the Father except the Holy Spirit draw him. Isn't that what we just heard earlier? The psalmist said that the sow, that uh, they that sow in tears shall reap joy. This is actually the kind of the law of the harvest and of sowing and reaping. It says, and the psalmist said, he who goes back and forth weeping, carrying his bag of seeds for planting, will indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. He that goes back and forth, you must go. You must go. That's the thing. That's what happened. So back and forth means that you're doing something. You've got to go. And if you're going to go, you need to go and expect some results. Why sow seed if you're not expecting any results, right? And and weeping in, in there where it said that, that, that kind of denotes a, 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 a form of burden. This is a burden. This ain't easy. Carrying precious seed, the word of God. That's the precious seed, the word of God for planting. And, uh, okay, shall doubtless, you know, it's kind of doubt kind of trying to for sure, without doubt, it's, it's a promise. See, you don't even have to worry about it. It's a promise that God is going to stop doubting. God says he's going to do it. He's going to do it. You go do what you're going to do and what you're supposed to do, and then he'll do what he said he's going to do. Amen? See, we'll have church growth with him, and I want to emphasize that. It's with him, not with just us. It's with him. As long as we keep Jesus forefront and let, us, and let Jesus have his, his way, and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, allow him to flow in the service, allow him to do the things he wants to do, and stay with it, I promise you, we're going to see some church growth. Not because we necessarily want it. He wants it. 
Now, I can't emphasize that enough. I'm trying to tell you. He wants church growth. We must continue to do our part. You know, it's a, it's a great partnership that we have with God, don't you believe? Amen. Amen. At times the road is rough and there's, there's, there's setbacks there's going to be, but we must press toward the goal. That's it. Philippians 3.14, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You want that heavenly prize? There's a, there's, there's, you endure it. you got to keep doing it. As the song goes, onward Christian soldiers. Right? Amen. Because we are soldiers in the Lord. This is an army of God that he's put together. You're part of the army. Here's here, but be not deceived. In Galatians it says this, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man or human soweth, see, we're, we're talking about sowing, that shall he also reap, and let us not be weary, this is a big deal, let us not be weary in well-doing. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing for God, you're going to feel weary, but don't let us be weary, that's your choice, you have a choice. The other frog chose to keep paddling, and the other one said, what's the use? So, in well-doing, be not, it said, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, there's a time it's come, in due season we shall what? Reap if we faint not. That means if we don't quit. You have heard this from me before. You've heard this. Quitters never. And winners never. Amen. Say it again. Winners never quit. And and never did I say it right? <laughs> <laughs> quitters never win, and winners never quit. I said that, I thought, that don't sound right. Don't follow me if I'm not saying something right. <laughs> Y'all know what to do. You can do it on your own, baby. You're going to be held accountable for everything you say and do. I just like me. See, as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, hey, listen, it's all, it, it's, to me, it's always too soon to quit. That's why I, I've raised my, my girls up, and people I've, I've, I've took under my wing a little bit, you might say, and I always say, hey, listen, man, you know what separates winners from losers? Five more minutes. Can you do this for five more minutes? And then after you get five more minutes, can you do this for five more minutes? Then after you do that, can you do this for five? See, because everybody, they look at the long run, and it's like, I can't do it. Can't do it. No, no, no. Not happening. Can you just do five more minutes? Just give me five. See, in Proverbs 24 10, it says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. We're going to read that amplified. It said, If you are slack, careless, in the day of distress, your strength is limited. How about in Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, it says this, He gives strength to the weary and to him who has no might. Come on! He gives strength to the weary and to him who has no might, he increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired. Even the young man. Them young bloods, man, you got young bloods. You know, man, it seems like that, man. You, know, you remember when you were young blood? <laughs> huh? you just like, I can, and then now you're like, I can't do what I used to do. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Even oh. youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men, like me, stumble <laughs> badly. But those who wait for the Lord, come on, <laughs> who expect who expect, look for, and hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They, I mean, so, so, so the young bloods got something going on for them because they're young, but they got, and then we got that, then it's, then it's us. No, well, it's y'all. And then it's, uh, it's this. It's this. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, come on, who expect, Look for and hope in Him. You got to expect it. You got to be looking for it. You can't just say, "Well, it, it might, I don't know if it's going to happen to me." Will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift 
they will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. The songwriter, he wrote this, he said he did, and I don't know his songwriters, he didn't bring us this far just to leave us. He didn't teach us to swim to let us drown. He didn't build his home in us just to move away. He didn't pick up, he didn't pick us up to let us down. Don't quit. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you are trudging on, you trudging on seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and its turns as every one of us sometimes learns. And many as failure turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up through the pace, though the, don't give up through the pace seems slow. Though this pace seems slow, you might succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. You're always looking at the negative. Just turn it around, look at the other side of that. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. Bad, eh, don't do that. And you can never tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're the hardest hit. It's when things seem the worst, then you must not quit. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? We must do as the early church did. They continued, is what it said, steadfastly. Ecclesiastes 1 and 4 6, I'm going to do it It says, is an encouraging scripture and so, showing uh, of, uh, of sowing until the church growth happens. That's what the sermon's are about. We're going to keep sowing until the church growth happens. Here's what it says in Ecclesiastes 11 1. It says, cast your bread on the surface of the waters. Be diligent, active, make thoughtful decisions if you will find it, and for you will find it after many days. You know how you pass that mountain and all of a sudden it starts to return? You'll get it. Ecclesiastes 11 4 6 says in the Amplified, it says, he who watches the wind waiting for all the conditions to be perfect, will not sow seed. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap a harvest. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Just get out there and do it. Come on, that's right. <laughs> Just as you do not know the way and the path of the wind or how the bones are formed in the womb of a pregnant woman, even so you do not know the activity of God who makes all things. Sow your seed in the morning and do not be idle with your hands in the evening. For you do not know whether morning or evening planting will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Don't judge each day by the harvest that you're reaping, but by the seed that you are planting. Because they, when you scatter seed, some of it's going to be plucked up, some of it's going to fall on not so good a ground. But let me just tell you right now, keep planting. Amen. You're never going to get a crop without planting. Amen. And that's the end of this. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus name.